Hi everyone, it's uh, James Brady again. Uh, I got a quick video uh, I wanted to share. I was sitting here, uh, I just got back from the gym, and I've been going to the gym for a while. And I've never gone to the gym in my life. I mean, I've been going for about a month, uh, pretty much every day. And it's been alright, but that's the, the word is related to that, and that's why I'm bringing it up. But um, I got home, and there's been so many hard things going on in my life lately, and I've seen so many other people around me who are believers who are really suffering, and they're going through hard stuff. And I was just sitting on my bed, and I was like, Lord, I, the, the, this verse that David says, you know, the, in your presence there are pleasures, um, you know, forevermore. I'm not sure if I'm quoting it exactly, but that's, it's, you know, in your presence is perfect fullness of joy, and there are pleasures forevermore. Those are both things that it said in the Psalms and elsewhere. And I, I asked this question, and I said, Lord, why is it that if in your presence there's pleasures forevermore, why is it drawing near to you is like more and more pain? And I was, I was just kind of leveling with him. I was like, my walk's been so hard, and I've, I've given up so much stuff. I go through a lot of pain and I you know I try to rejoice in it and I'm not the best at that to be honest with you if you ask anyone here they'd say yeah Brady could rejoice better but I, I try hard uh, I try real hard to rejoice and to say thank you for everything that he does for me but um, it's been really hard and really crucifying and I asked him why why is it so painful to get close to the presence of God in whom you know his presence there are pleasures forevermore I don't get it and I heard this answer I didn't even realize it was him at first until I tested it uh, and the answer was by the sweat of your brow you'll eat bread and I was thinking about it and it was like and there was a little more that was just kind of directed at me but it's this thought that just passed through my head and, and I was like that didn't feel like demonic warfare like because demons talk to me a lot and I was like, that didn't feel like the enemy. And I tested it. I was like, you know, please confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And I heard him, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And I went, well, I have to think about that now. <clears throat> and mostly what it made me think was, okay, yeah, I'm willing to put up with it. I mean, people work out. That was the context. People work out so they can get in shape, so they can look good, so they can, you know, get that pretty wife or whatever, or just so they can have an easier time getting around. People... Um, people work really hard in college to get the degree so they can be a doctor so they can make money and have a good life um, there's a lot of things that we do where we work really hard and then we get, get to eat the fruits of our labors right and that's that's the curse that was put on Adam and, and the way he said it was it wasn't uh, a condemnation it wasn't anything mean it was just this is how it is by the sweat of your brow you eat bread and that bread can be being in the shape you want to be in that bread can be getting to me I mean he is the bread of life I just felt like there was all kinds of spirals on it um, but it was a curse it was a curse on Adam and it said in him you know he became a curse so that we could be blessed and I know Doug has talked about that that um, that the curse of Adam falls off that when you sorry about that the video cut off Doug's talked about um, I know he's talked about in other videos that the curse on Adam, um, you know, that, that by the sweat of your brow you'll eat bread, is, is a consequence of being connected to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That they went away from God. God had given them the whole garden, everything, for free. They were in it. They, it, it just God just wanted to pour out love on them. That's who God is. But then they got separated from God because the enemy tricked them. And... Um, that was the curse that came and I know I believe I've read where it talks about the overcomers those who received the morning star and Jesus said I am the bright morning star um, I know that you know he became a curse so that we could be blessed but I don't I don't think we apprehend I don't think we take hold of that promise until we are overcomers until the enemy isn't able to push our buttons so easily, until, you know, we don't um, fail to trust him. I asked the Lord one time, Lord, when am, I, when am I gonna be able to talk to you the way I want to, where I can ask you questions and you answer them? And he said, when you trust me. 
and that was like a baseball bat to the stomach because I knew I've been trying to trust him with all my heart for like four or five years already and it certainly wasn't going to get any easier for me to have the perfect trust he was demanding. Uh, you know, asking for and knowing was good. I didn't mean to say it demanding like it was a bad thing, but God's standard is, is that high and it should be. Anyway, I, the, the, my point here is um, I, I've been striving to get to being an overcomer. Doug calls it the baptism of fire. The uh, Revelation says to the overcomers, I will give the morning star. And Jesus says, I am the bright morning star. Um, Peter in, you know, says, uh, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. And Paul says, the hope of glory Christ in us. Um, I've been striving for that for years and it's really hard. It's really hard not to be a slave to sin every day. And I don't mean willful sin, I mean just messing up. That word sin means, you know, missing the mark. I don't mean that I'm looking at porn or, or, you know, yelling at people when I know I shouldn't. I mean just trying to do your best and it's like, I don't know what will be good right now. I'm going to try and I'm, and I'm probably going to mess up because Jesus didn't tell me what to do. That's missing the mark. That stuff grieves me because it's like I hate hurting people. I hate hurting their walk. I hate saying things that it's like that isn't what Jesus would say. And I don't know better because I'm not hearing him better. And I'm Anyway, I, I, I just pray that anyone watching this, we, let's strive to that high calling, the high calling that we have in Christ Jesus, to be overcomers, not just saying the job's done when really there are all kinds of ways the enemy has legal ground on us or knows how to push our buttons or get our cups not full, but strive so that we're really 100% all surrendered. We got a lid and a seal like Jesus on the tomb. We're just ready to go. When he says go, we go, and there isn't any questions. We're just ready to love people like Jesus. We're ready to surrender to whatever he says. We love him with all our hearts, our soul, our strength. And uh, the enemy, the evil one's not able to touch us. It says that in First John. That's like an amazing promise. It says, you know, the one who knows him cannot continue to sin. And the one who is born of God keeps him so that the evil one cannot touch him. I'm not quoting it exactly, but that's First John I don't remember the verse, but uh, you can look it up. It, the evil one cannot touch him is, is part of the verse. Uh, anyway, guys, I wanted to keep this short, and I'm kind of rambling. So I, I hope the, the first part is something good to think about. Um, you know, what does that mean? And, and, and can we take hold of, you know, him being a curse for us so that we could be blessed? Anyway, God bless you guys. In the name of Jesus, amen.